This is Delhi. Please stand by for our next program. This is All India Radio. In our national program of talks tonight, we now bring you a panel discussion entitled The Magnificent Citadel, Golconda Fort. The panelists are Ms. Vasanta Shobha Turuga, Conservation Architect and Urban Regional Planner, who joins the discussion online from Bengaluru, Professor Sanjay Subodh, Department of Ancient and Medieval History, Hyderabad Central University, and Dr. Kedareshwari, former curator, Salarjung Museum, art historian and archaeologist, who initiates and moderates the discussion. Namaskar. We are here to discuss and talk about the great Golconda Fort. I am Dr. Kedareshwari from Salarjung Museum. I retired as a curator. And I have with me Mr. Sanjay Subodh, who is from the University of Hyderabad and teaches medieval history. We also have online Ms. Shobha Turaga, who will be joining us from Bangalore. Golconda region has always attracted the most powerful and mighty rulers from across India. Set in idyllic rock formation of immense age, this place has been beautifully thought of, written about by travel writers, recorded both by artists in numerous folk songs and today also this great fort of Golconda, which from where the Qutub Shahis ruled, celebrates the great Bonalu festival too. Today we are here to talk about this. Mr. Shubodh, can you tell us something about the Golconda fort? When we think of Golconda, because as a student of history, what enamors me is the knowledge which it contains. Because normally when we go to any fort, normally we are more associated with the story part of the fort. So in that case, every fort has a story. But I look beyond that part. And I'm also reminded of one of my traveler who came to India in 16th century. His name is Muhammad bin Qasim Farishta. When he writes about Hyderabad and Golconda, he writes about Hyderabad as a city of lakes. So when you look into this whole area where the water is required because it's a dry area, did not have much of the rainfall, the importance of the water is made out. And when we look into the size of the Golconda Fort, the massive structure it has, plus the kind of people or number of people who would be living in it, how much their water requirement. Yes. And secondly, because it's not only a question of meeting their water requirement, what would be the mechanism of it? Hmm. Because if it's a defensive architecture, then the source of water has to be protected yes. because of people are yes. inside yes, and yes. enemy is outside. Yes. How do you get the regular And being supplies? a hill fort. Yeah, being a hill fort. I think fort. that was a very yeah. important source. Yes. So that is one part of it. And second part of it is because it's a dry area. Yes. So whatever rain water you have, you have to conserve it. Yes. And that is how the rain conservation mechanism also is very began. visible. I think that's uh, I'm absolutely very contemporary. And very contemporary idea of, uh, you know, talking about ecology and Golconda Fort. And before we do that, where was this Golconda? The Golconda region was in peninsular India. It was located very strategically between, you know, Surat in the west and Mashadipatnam mm -hmm. on the east. east. So as a result, it became a very important trade port. And when you talk of Golconda, what do you think of about? You think about diamonds. Yes. Yes. And you can see some of these Golconda diamonds in the famed Nizam's jewels, which are in the custody of the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. Apart from that, this... Just to uh, intervene. Yes. Because just to add, because even the famous Kohinoor diamond yes. was mined out of Golconda. Yes. Only. Kohinoor. Yes. Ah. Mountain of light. Yeah. Apart from Kohinoor, we also had the Blue Hope, in, which is in USA. We have the pink Darya, the pink Darya in Noor from in Iran, the white regent in France, and the Dresden green in Germany. These are the diamonds which were mined from Golconda. But what else was Golconda famous for? The Golconda fort, who decided? Kulikutub Shah, the first ruler, decided to make it its capital. And before that, we see there was a mud fort right from the Kakatiyan times which the Bahamanis and then later on the Qutub Shahis, you know, further strengthened this fort. As per the architectural details we get today, it's an Indo-Islamic architecture. 
and it's a hill fort and when we talk about the fort we also must take into consideration the necropolis the royal necropolis which is at the base of the fort the khazana building which very few people usually visit because that is under the state government yeah. the golconda fort is under the archaeological, archaeological survey sir. of india and within the qutub shahi uh, tombs which is you know sprawled over 100 acres mm. you have the single dome mausoleums and you have the mosques attached to it mausoleum the concept was the dead the those who prayed in the mosque the prayer should reach the ears of the dead and beautiful gardens having flowering trees and fruit trees so it was when they did this they thought of replica of paradise on earth and they followed in their garden and scape also design they followed the persian concept of the char chaman which you can see very clearly Actually, in the qutub shahi tombs in addition of to this in the tombs you can see a summer palace underground summer palace and you can see a mortuary bath mortuary and hammam so all this made up this golconda fort it was a living city it had three layers of walls and then it had almost 87 bastions and eight main gates i think uh, which uh, you know our uh, friend shobha turga can talk about shobha you could tell us you know you made the first document on the golconda fort so perhaps you could tell us the some of the architectural details of the fort namaste all thank you for inviting me to participate in this discussion on golconda i am a conservation architect and i had the opportunity of working on the research of golconda architecture to which center for the studies and later on submitted a document to government of andhra pradesh first nomination of uh, golconda in hyderabad as world heritage city so i take this opportunity to uh, share with you a few details on golconda architecture about the lesser known structures and popular ones too yes so shobha fort, yes yes uh, you could tell us about uh, the architectural details of yes. the fort so what i uh, found i mean to the i'm very fortunate to have studied the uh, golconda fort Uh, and as mr subod has said, mentioned the technical details and uh, the, there is the story of golconda i'll try to cover the a few structures uh, which are uh, important in understanding golconda fort so actually golconda fort uh, as we all know is a prominent and famous fort it is known to be the first city before the foundation of hyderabad was built around chandina what is popularly shown is limited to the inner fort balahisar area and qutub shahi tombs that you have mentioned and given the details but when we study golconda fort as a capital of golconda kingdom one of the five kingdoms of deccan sultanate after bahmani rule ended we will truly understand the role position and significance of golconda kingdom in the context of deccan I'll speak a few lines about Golconda architecture as known from the surviving monuments in the chronological orders of the rulers. Not in detail the story, but in the, yeah, yeah, the order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could highlight so some of the features. Little bit. Right? Yeah. We all know that Golconda was an outpost in the Kakatiya Kingdom, which you have already mentioned. The first ruler of Qutub Shahi dynasty, Sultan Kuli, who was the governor of Bahmani since 1498. Strengthen the fort, which is located. This the area where Sultan Kuli strengthened the fort is in the Balahisar Inner Fort area. This is the place where tourist visits and see the sound and light show. This is the core of Golconda Fort. Just outside the Balahisar gate are two very elegant commands called Habshi Command, and little away uh, from this is the Jami Masjid where Sultan Kuli was king. The Jami Masjid is significant historically as it has a stone saying. It was built in 1518 in the name of Bahmani ruler. Yes, yes. And 1518 is taken as the date of starting of Qutub yeah, Shahi yeah, rule. Yes. So within Balahisar are the ruins of the palace complexes, gates, Rani Mahal, Akhanda Mahal, and offices, Mansuri Bath, mosque, and other structures. People are taken to the topmost position with a gaddi, a throne, uh, which has a 360 degree view around the fort, including Tara Mati Baradri and Pema Mati Mosque. The structures named after dancing girls during the time of last Qutub Shahi ruler Abul Hasan Banasha other structures shown to visitors are the Ramdas jail It yes i think uh, shobha that bhakt ramadas jail uh, is something yeah. you know which needs to be highlighted for our you know listeners bhakt ramdas was jailed in qutub shahi you know architecture within the uh, premises of the golconda fort 
So if you could talk about that. Yes, uh, that uh, that is there. I mean, he was put. Uh, he is told. It is said that he is put in a granary with uh, you know skylight. This is after actually he is uh, said to have uh, taken away for official uh, funds to build Padrachalam Temple, and he was jailed in this place. Hmm. So it is it is very well intact, and we can go and see that it's you know some uh, drawings from the wall, and that and this story is told to. Visitors. visitors and uh, also how uh, you, I mean Abul Hasan Tanasha released uh, Pastor Amdasu after who young man uh, uh, told him that uh, return the money yes uh, to the ruler yeah and then uh, Abul Hasan Tanasha is uh, felt that it was Ram and Lakshman uh, Ram and Lakshman coming yeah in their form and telling him yes <laughs> yes and there's also a very interesting song also composed about uh, yeah about Bhakti Ramadas you know Bhakti Ramadas. Uh, questioning lord drama that uh, how do you think i made all the jewels of sita and etc so very interesting uh, lyrics it has so uh, shobha that was really very interesting uh, architectural details which you have highlighted may i now request uh, professor subodh to highlight the water technology of golconda fort he is working on it right now when we think of water because for city of hyderabad or golconda water had to be preserved and then water had to be supplied so there were always two parts of the water it's not only conservation but it's also related to the supply and when we look into the topography of the deccan the subsurface of the soil is quartz which does not allow permeation of water so wherever water was stored that would be limited to that area only so for golconda essentially the main water body which supplied water to it is durgam cherubu and it is nestled between hills so it was not visible hmm. so even if people who were coming from delhi or from bahmani's be their side the water body was not, not visible. visible and water was contained they had a sluice system which is still prevalent today yeah. water was allowed to come out of it then it was collected in a tank and then from that tank water had to be supplied hmm. to a great distance we have the open channel pipeline system where the gravity would allow water to be traveling and once it reached the shekpet nala and it had to enter into kutub shahi tomb area it had to go under a covered pipeline covered system pipelines. stone made of stone made of stones and uh, what also happens is because immediately before that water also had to be diversified hmm. so we have manikonda jagir where the water from durgam cheru also supplemented that water body which was used for agriculture hmm. purposes, purposes. up to kutub shahi tomb when we look at the water supply system then it is essentially working on gravity which is principle yes, of siphoning yes, yes. now to a naked eye when you go to a durgam cheru it may appear to be at a lower level huh. and golconda is at a high much higher level so one would ask a very simple question how would water reach up to oh, that extent yes, yes interestingly we are fortunate we have so much electronic gadgets today we can measure the height etc and if you use a gps system today you would be amazed to know that the location of durgam cheru is 25 meters above the sea level than the point where water enters golconda fort now oh, that is one that is a interesting very find. interesting thing and water came out of Gul- uh, kutub shahi tombs then it had to climb up okay. and climbing of water could not have been done through principle of siphoning and there we see application of boyle's law the pipeline which is to a great extent is open has the channel a, the channel, channel which is open yeah, yeah is open has a diminishing measurement hmm. so which means water had to be put in pressure hmm. and that is where we see application of boyle's law and this pipe a channel which has to go it could not go in a straight line so it had to go in a zigzag form which would mean that simultaneously principle of siphoning would also be applicable, applicable. along with the boyle's law and then water entered the golconda fort the point from where the water en- entered the golconda fort to the tank where the water was brought it is simply gravity which brings the water from there water had to be distributed now one point of water went to the mortuary bath which is very Within close the, to the bala hisar yes. gate and that is the actually mortuary bath hmm. the one which we have in kutub shahi Shaitons. tomb which is labeled as mortuary bath is not actually mortuary bath because this mortuary bath we have 
had a bath mechanism where we look into the mortuary bath which we have in Qutub Shahi tombs is actually a part of the paradise on earth. It has a steam bath mechanism. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, one more thing what we find is that within the Actually, fort... Actually, it is a hammam. It's a hammam. It's a hammam. The it's one in Qutub Shahi tombs, it's a it was meant for visitors to come... Actually, and uh, it was open to all during festives, during Eid, you know. Actually, all see, the visitors used to come. Because we have Tavernia's writing describing how visitors would come yeah. and get bread and uh, carpets, weaved, woven carpets would be laid out and you're talking about the, you know, beautiful architecture and all. So many visitors. Yeah, uh, see, yeah, because yeah. actually what happens is when we look into the development of architecture of tomb, it begins with a single individual, single structure, individual structure and then develops... Kuli Kutubsha. Not only Kuli Kutubsha. Kuli, no, first Sultan Kuli. Very, it's a simple pattern. No, I'm not... I'm not You're not talking about I'm the, not looking into only the development of architecture under Kuli Kutubsha. I'm haan. talking in general. No, this is... When you see the general, uh, the Golconda architecture, where if you see the fort itself, it has seen three dynasties. After that, when you no, come I'm down not to limiting the myself tombs. to the Deccan. I'm, I'm talking okay, about the okay. general architecture okay, of a okay, tomb. Fine, fine. So there we see development of architecture in the form of a complex, hmm. okay, within a boundary, and it gets its name as Raza, and that is derived from Quran, where Raza is meant to be a replica of paradise on earth, hmm. and it takes its resemblance from the Bible, okay, and so that is the reason whatever could be imagined about paradise. All those have to be fitted in a Raza. Hmm. And that is the reason in your Qutub Kulishahi tombs, when you talk about trees, when you talk about water channels, yes, water channels. when you talk about stepping gardens, bells, stepping yeah, wells. those all had to be put in there. Yeah. So interestingly, when you think of Qutub Kulishahi tombs, when you think of a Chahar Bagh pattern, steps and four squares constructed, intersecting lines would work as waterways and the fountain would run. Within Qutub Shahi tombs, we have five natural water bodies which would be conserving water and supplying. Except for one where we have clear-cut evidence of Persian wheel functioning, all other water bodies probably did not employ Persian wheel. Hmm. There was a Sakya, but it was probably without a pin drum gearing system. Hmm. And in all those, we find users of gravity to supply water. Now, when we come down to Golconda Fort, what we find is, because normally in a fort architecture, there is a division between a private space and a public space. If you go to Red Fort Delhi, so you have a diwan e a clear-cut dividing line. In Golconda Fort, it's slightly mixed. So, division seems to be in the form of layers. If the lower layer is the public space, upper layer is the private space. So, very close to the tank, within Golconda Fort, we have Ravens, which has a public bath, mm. which has a hammam. So, when water flew out of tank of the Golconda Fort, somewhere it went inside the pie, inside the walls as a the concealed pipes, pipelines. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere it is outside overhead. That also could be because wherever the fort was renovated, there was a possibility of putting pipes inside the walls, etc. Where it was not, mm. it was put over. But throughout the fort, we find uses of gravity siphoning as being in place where the water would be traveling. Now, uses of water was not only in the sense of quenching the thirst of the people or the animals, etc. It was also used as a cooling system. System, yes. So, when you go inside the interiors, the palace part of it, the moment you cross the Premamati Mosque and then you go into the interior, what you find is there were different ways of maintaining the temperature inside. One is you find the arches which allow you inside and those arches are all of them overlapping, overlapping. which means they do not allow free passage of air. air. They yes. put pressure into the air. And on both sides of the walls, you find angular compressed openings which would put pressure into the air. The pinches. Pinches and then that would actually allow combined gas law to function. Yes. Once the combined gas law functions, the automatically the temperature goes down. Yes. Where the pressure yes. is more, yes. temperature is less. And there they use water in the form of a casket which would further bring down the temperature. Temperatures. So even if you, in modern times, when there is not much of a system functioning, you can still feel the minimum difference of 5 degree temperature yes, between, from inside yes. and yes. outside. So That's this, a very interesting find. We have another very interesting find about the acoustics. Yeah. The aspect, you know, the Taramati and Premamati. The Premamati got a mosque built 
and uh, for taramati the courtesan dancer there was a special pavilion built which we uh, call or uh, term it as taramati baradari and uh, it is said that the uh, ruler or the sultan used could hear her uh, singing from taramati baradari uh, to till the golconda fort and uh, this uh, way of uh, functioning the acoustics planning the acoustics you have heard the te- water technology part of the discussion from uh, professor subodh and now this acoustics also had a very important role to play so it the fort the taramati baradari the premamati mosque the kutub shahi tombs the khazana building which is within the interiors made up this entire golconda complex and this complex which was uh, which uh, uh, which uh, you know aurangzeb attacked in 1687 it took him almost 8 to 9 months Yeah. to he laid siege for 8 months he could before he could uh, he could not conquer it he ah, only captured it through treachery treachery which most of the battles in india uh, were lost because of uh, you know treachery and conspiracy and uh, this fort had 87 bastions and all the 87 bastions of burj had cannons and uh, it is said that aurangzeb has when he came he left uh, behind two important cannons which are on the musa burj and mm-hmm. petla burj yes so this fort is uh, really uh, has a very romantic story also it is said that uh, the founder of hyderabad uh, mohammed kuli qutub shah you know who built the char minar and he designed it as a paradise on earth you know uh, using the char bagh principle again and uh, he prayed to the god that fill this uh, city of mine as you have filled up the ocean with fish so that kind of a cosmopolitan secular nature the G- ganga jamuni tehzeeb the tehzeeb the ganga jamuni culture was so prevalent and they were great patronizers of art and culture it was during the qutub shahi tomb that you know the dakni idiom the telugu language also was developed. Uh, yeah developed and dakini idiom developed and the beautiful dakini and uh, golconda miniature paintings which are in the state museum uh, dr rajshekar reddy uh, state museum in public gardens or bageyam and at the salarjang museum you can see some of them in fact you can see this dakini art all over india so this in fact uh, brings us to the fact that historically politically architecturally from the cultural point of view and most important because of the resplendent jewels diamonds semi precious stones i won't i will would never say semi precious which we, one can see in the nizam jewels exhibitions also we can make out that golconda is region is truly attracted the entire world so what do we have for youngsters here we have the cannons not only cannons you know very attractive cannons i remember during one of my visits to the golconda fort as the director of archaeology this mukaram ja you know had visited and he was talking to me about how to preserve these uh, cannons and very though the golconda fort is under the archaeological survey of india the qutub shahi tombs is under the state, state archaeology and do you know who handed over these tombs to the department it was the nizam himself who handed Hunded. it over he he himself was a great uh, you know he had a great vision and he built the first wall protecting the golconda tombs you know the largest necropolis when the iranians were here they called it uh, one of the greatest heritage of the world next to they compared it with the heritage in greece so that is a kind of importance it has almost 100 smaller monuments and edifices crenets and uh, the beautiful floral uh, designs and geometrical patterns you know which combines the principle the islamic principle of balance and harmony can be seen in this qutub uh, shahi gardens and uh, the gardens are a special attraction for visitors usually these architectural monuments when we talk of them we talk of conservation we talk of preservation but most important is how far are they useful to the community also around so that importance of making our uh, tourist destinations important economically and you know generating employment also is another very big factor another important uh, factor which i want to share with uh, the listeners is it has number of birds visiting the qutub shahi yes. gardens i you know and uh, the bird watchers society of hyderabad also keep visiting it 
so it's an attraction truly and this is the only spot in hyderabad where you can do night gazing because there are very few lights lights you know we have flooded our city with lights but this is the tombs are the place where you can see the night sky quite clearly so these are the attractions which this beautiful golconda fort offers for the visitor uh, so in i do welcome all the listeners to come to hyderabad visit golconda fort see all these attractions for yourself and experience the beauty and harmony of nature within the qutub shahi tombs and gardens i would also like to add one more thing that if you people are coming to hyderabad before you enter the golconda fort just be amazed by seeing the outer wall of the golconda fort it has no mortar and just imagine how that massive structure stands out even today without users of the mortar yeah that when you enter with- hyderabad uh, sanjay said i must say there's something called shake pit sarai uh, when you when the visitors came to golconda fort they had to stop at the sarai and wait for the permission of the sultan to enter mm-hmm. the fort all the traders so there are camel stables and horses stables at the sarai this is under the protection of the you know the state department of heritage now and uh, i welcome all of y'all to come visit us visit the talangana state visit the kalkunda fort so many important rulers and dynasties try to capture it you come capture it with your senses thank you very much thank you so much in our national program of talks tonight you just heard a panel discussion entitled the magnificent citadel golconda fort the panelists were ms vasanta shobhaturuga conservation architect and urban regional planner who joined the discussion online from bengaluru professor sanjay subodh department of ancient and medieval history hyderabad central university and dr kedarishwari former curator Salarjung Museum art historian and archaeologist who initiated and moderated the discussion produced by Ms Seema Kumari this presentation of AIR Hyderabad came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio